So Anne, about three years ago now, you came to me with the idea of having an out of the darkness campus walk to fight suicide here at Suffolk. What makes you so passionate about this issue and about having a walk like this here? So when I was still in high school, I went to an out of the darkness community walk and I went accidentally and it ended up changing the trajectory of my life. It changed my major in college, it changed the person who I wanted to be and the person that I was. But I had to almost happen upon that. And it's a real issue on college campuses, mental health, suicide. It's something that we're very aware of. But when I started to see it, I got to see it through the eyes of an advocate and through somebody who had a community. And one day I realized that there were people that were seeing this issue without that community and maybe seeing it as being really alone. So when I brought the walk here, it made sense to me. It was my campus, it was the place that I was growing to love and that I wanted to feel really safe on. So if I could make the community feel safe here too and feel like they weren't alone, then it was something that we had to do. There is a change right now that we see this incredible tipping point where we do see media covering it and we do see people willing to listen to the experts in this field and understand that this isn't an issue anybody should be facing alone. And this is an issue that we should be able to talk about because it's health. Mental health, physical health, it is health. And we need to start seeing it that way for that stigma to go away. There's a lot of fear about when someone opens up not saying or doing the right things, but I think you made a really good point in mentioning that really it's about just listening and letting somebody know that you care. And that's really the most important thing and being will willing to hear what they have to say. You know, that can be more powerful than all the right words in the world. There is nothing more believing than having somebody say to you, wherever you're at, whatever's going on, I'm here for you. What are some of the signs of someone that may be struggling with suicidal thoughts? The sign that I always tell people, because I think it's the easiest to remember, is just to think of the word change. If you have somebody in your life that you see that is changing their diet, changing their sleeping habits, even if it's somebody who's been really down for a while, suddenly being really happy, those are all signs of suicidal intent. Those are signs of suicidal ideation. But also to just notice your friend's affect, notice their emotions is probably a better way of saying it. Mm -hmm. To really ask people and honestly want the answer. That's how you're going to find these signs of suicide. I think it's important to also always remember or always know or remind people that the walks are so important, right? We need to do things like this so that people do feel a sense of community. They get that this is an issue that affects people on so many different levels. But the reality is, is that any conversation is an opportunity for you to get the help that you need. So here at Suffolk, there are people like me, there are coordinators like myself that are here all the time, available to all students and that you can come to sort of on a community level, right? But then we have places like Response. Response is a hotline that Suffolk County runs that you can call anytime. So even if we're not available here in the college, there are people that are available 24 hours a day outside of our walls, outside of the college, right? And then you have national organizations, right? Like the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention and the national hotline that exists. So there's, there's always an opportunity sort of to start the conversation, to realize that you're not by yourself. Um, and being aware of the resources that are around you is part of how you make that change too. Yeah, I definitely took for granted when I got to college, I took for granted a lot the fact that I knew the hotline existed. Mm -hmm. The hotline was something that I was told about. And when I would talk to my peers and say, do you know that you can call or this text, number? Or text. Call, text. There's a messaging online. There's in-person support groups. Do you know that all of this is available to you for free? That it's not going to show up on your phone bill if you need someone to talk to? That they will talk to you whether it is something that is a mental health issue or if you just did bad on a test? And I had known that. So I had that resource. Mm -hmm. It's an incredible resource. I had gone to the counseling center at Suffolk and had that support system in there. So to share those resources and to have events like the walk where we can tell people, mm -hmm. look at all these options that you have. If you're not comfortable getting on the phone or you're not comfortable coming in person, you can text. If you're not comfortable with something, there is some avenue that you can take to get a resource. And that's one of the things I think is really interesting about having an event on a place like Suffolk's campus where you guys have this resource so direct and so many people that want to help. Mm -hmm but they can also see that you can come here, you can come county level, you can come national level, and there's somebody there for you. It's incredible that 
that resource is there for people, but it's also necessary for them to know that they can use it, no matter what's going on. So I just wanted to thank you, Anne, for joining me here today and for being so brave to have this conversation with me. Um, it's so important for students to see people like you who are willing to share their stories.